We're the WHO Radio Wise Guys. I'm Brian Gongle. I'm Dan Adams. And we are here to help you out in case you find out that your Facebook account has gotten hacked. This advice is at least the best we can come up with as of May 14th, 2011. So again, how do you find out that your Facebook account has gotten hacked? This happens to a lot of people when they discover that there are messages being posted under their names or uh, messages being sent out under their names that uh, they didn't send at all. That's usually your first indicator that your Facebook account has been hacked and we are here to help. So stage one if you discover that your Facebook account has been hacked, is stop the bleeding. This is a three-part thing. Stage one is stop the bleeding, which means number one, you need to log in and change your Facebook password. So if you log in under Facebook, uh, you get a new Facebook password so that you can stop whatever messages are being sent out under your name from, being conti or from continuing to be sent out. This is something that I think, um, you know, if you suspect anything going on, uh, you should just automatically do. First thing, is, this should be your first course of action. But the thing is, make this a temporary password, and we'll get to that in just a second. But make up a complex temporary password, write it down and use it, but uh, be prepared to change it again. Step two is to delete all the fake messages that have gone up under your name. You don't want those being posted on other people's walls. You don't want messages going out under your name, because these are crooks who are trying to take advantage of people. They're using your good name to spread their bad messages. So if you delete those messages, you will protect your friends and family from being attacked as well. So that's very useful stuff to do. So once you've stopped the bleeding, you move on to phase two of this operation, which is to root out the cause, figuring out how you got hacked in the first place. Now step one when you get into rooting out the cause is to update all programs. In particular, update your antivirus and anti-spyware programs, but update all the others as well. There's a very good chance that the browser that you're using is out of date. There's a good chance that the uh, email programs, for instance, that you're using are out of date. Update every program that you can find. Now, the way that you can best do this is we have a comprehensive checklist that's over at whoradio.com on the Wise Guys page that walks you through all of those programs. You should probably be checking out. There are plenty more, but we've got a list of most of the uh, common ones that everybody should be doing. You want to use the latest versions of everything, web browsers especially, but also your antivirus programs so that you can move on to step two, which is to run a comprehensive antivirus scan. This is where you do a complete top to bottom scan of your computer everything that's there and you do this using your antivirus program. You should do this on a regular basis anyway, like once a week, once every couple weeks at least. Um, you should do this. But if you've gotten hacked, it's very likely that what's happened is, is that you've downloaded something you shouldn't have and that is doing things like uh, checking in on the keystrokes that you're logging onto your computer, which includes your passwords and things like that. So you need an antivirus scan to protect yourself against those. And part two of this, or part three rather, is to run a comprehensive anti-spyware scan. It's related to the antivirus. Many times they're actually integrated into the same thing, but you want to run each of those because it's either a virus or spyware, most likely, that's uh, giving somebody else access to your account. And again, you should be doing this on a regular basis. Absolutely, but this is what you do immediately following an event in which your account has been hacked. That allows you to move on to phase three protecting yourself from future attacks. And the first thing that you do here, if you haven't already, is step one, create an administrative login on your computer. So you get into that thing, set up an administrator-only account. You don't want to be running your computer ordinarily in an admin level, which means you're allowed to do everything. You want to be running your computer normally in a limited access account. The only thing really that's limited in a limited access account is that you can't load new programs. But the thing is that viruses are programs, so it helps the computer protect you. If you need more advice on this and more information on it, again, the link is over at whoradio.com on the Wise Guys page explaining how to set up an administrator-only account. Very valuable stuff to do. Number two, switch yourself to webmail. There's a good chance that if you have a virus, you've gotten it by downloading email. Oftentimes this happens if you're using a program like Outlook and it's coming directly onto your computer. I advise using webmail as much as possible, a service like Gmail or Hotmail or Yahoo Mail, anything that allows you to use a web-based service to get your email so that you don't download things onto your computer directly, you look at them through a web browser. It just adds another level of security. Number three, lock down your wireless network. This is something that not everybody does. People have gotten a lot better about it than they used to be, but there is a possibility, remote though it may be, that your wireless network is open and is accessible to people who just happen to be literally driving down the street. In this, you don't want that. In this day and age, when you, when somebody can get onto your unsecure wireless network, download stuff, and you suffer the penalty for it, 
this should be automatic. You should be locking down your wireless network and not allowing anybody else to get on it. Absolutely. So that means securing it with a password. It also means, though, by extension, don't use services like Facebook when you're in, for instance, a coffee shop or in a library or in a bookstore using somebody else's wireless network or an airport, for instance. Don't use services that allow you to log in and use your passwords and usernames on services that don't require you to be secured before you get there. Don't use unsecured wireless networks for these purposes, ever. Seriously, just don't do it. Step four, switch browsers if you haven't already. If you're using Internet Explorer, use a different browser, whether that's Firefox or Chrome or Opera or even Safari for Windows. Switch browsers. There's a very good reason behind this. It's that more people use Internet Explorer than anything else, so that's what the crooks target when they're writing viruses and things like that to attack browsers. We, we have been saying this for years. Um, use a different browser other than Internet Explorer, and the chance of you getting hacked or you getting any kind of a virus, it goes way down. It does decrease way, way significantly. Down. It's the, like the old line, why do crooks rob banks? Because that's where the money is. Why do people who are crooks write viruses to attack Internet Explorer? Because that's what everybody's using. So if you get away from that, you will uh, decrease your level of susceptibility. It's not perfect, but it's a very helpful additional step. Finally, go back into Facebook, and for step five, change that Facebook password again. Because the thing is, you changed it originally to stop the bleeding, but you didn't have your computer secured when you did that. So there's a good chance that whoever captured your password to begin with got your new password when you changed it. So this is what you do after you've locked down the computer and increased your security and saved things. You need to go in and change that password again. And for further advice, anytime, catch us for the WHO Radio Wise Guys. I'm Brian Gongle. I'm Dan Adams. And you can catch us every Saturday at 1 o'clock Central Time on News Radio 1040 WHO. That is a station that you can catch streaming online at whoradio.com or 1040 AM on the radio dial anywhere in the state of Iowa. So check us out anytime you need helpful advice on trends, tips, and technology. We'll be here for you, including if your Facebook account gets hacked yet again.